Boker Tov, Boker Tov, Gamar Tov. Yusuf, it's good to see you back. <laughs> Rami, Gamar Tov to everybody. And um, uh, again, we learned for a fourth language for Allah, Zabed, Ra'uma. Now, <clears throat> today's daf is daf Tzadik Gimel, Ink Subas, from the Mishnah. This is a famous Mishnah, made most famous by Professor Alman, the famous from Jew here in Yerushalayim, who won the Nobel Prize in economics in, back in 2005 for his analysis of this mission. It was actually game theory, and he based a lot of it on this mission, which is a very difficult mission to understand. You can figure out right away that if it takes a Nobel Prize winner to explain the mission, not so simple. What is the mission talking about? Misha Yenosei Shalosh Hashem. Well, that's your first problem. He has three wives at one time. Three wives at one time. And let's assume that he got married to all of them at the same time. We're going to talk in the next Mishnah about time stamping. You know, today we have, you know, time stamping. They bring, you bring something to the court, not just the date that they write in, but sometimes they time stamp it. Was it 10.07 or 10.08 in the morning? You know, that's important. But here, let's assume that he married them all at the same time. We've had many times, how is it possible to marry uh, uh, three people at the exact same time? You know, how we have sleep? Very simple. He, the, the three women, three women, let's say, sent a shliach to receive the ring or the money, whatever, or the shtar, and the husband sent the shliach to that shliach. So when one shliach uh, s- sent the marriage, sent the rings, uh, sent the ring, the money, let's say a check or whatever it was, a check or whatever, good, but let's say he sent a coin for all three women at the same time. So they basically, they all got married at the same time, at the same split second, in fact. So that's how you could have where three people got married at the same time, because we saw before, if one's married first, Let's say uh, he married one in January and he married another one in February and he died and they both had a sub of 200 and he only left $200. Who's going to get the money? The one that he married in January. She was there first. She had the first shibut. It's like the first balchot, right? So if they married, if they weren't married at the same time, whoever got married first has a demand. If there's enough money to pay everybody, great. But if there's not enough, the first one gets it. Here, let's assume they all married at the same time. However, they didn't each have the same amount of ksuba. Let's assume Mason he died. Let's say this woman had been previously married. She only had a ksub of a hundred. The Shalzuma Sayim. And number two, we'll call him number one, number two, number three. Number two had a ksub of two hundred. The Shalzu Shalsh and third one had a of three hundred. So what's his total obligation upon death or divorce? Six hundred. Uh, now, if he had six hundred dollars, then there's no problem, right? But he didn't have the six hundred dollars, right? So when he died, all he left was how much? So in the first instance, there was only $100 there. Now think about it. We're talking dollars, right? We in zoos, whatever, but let's say dollars. And we always talk in terms of dollars. Angel, he only had $100 there. They each have a claim that you say, well, the one who had 300 should get more, right? Well, depends how you look at it. That's what I was going to teach us. There's different ways to look at it. Each one on the, on the first $100, they all have an equal claim. Because whether your exhibit was 100, number one had exhibit 100, number two had 200, number three had 300. But on 100, they're all the same. So what do you do if there was only 100 hours there? Chokim Meshav, they split it. Each one gets 33 and a third. Very simple. Hayusham, Masayim. Oh, wait a minute. Now we get complicated. Now let's say there was $200 to split up between number one, number two, and number three. Remember, number one gets 100, number two gets 200, number three gets 300. And that's what she has a demand for. There's not enough money to go around. There's only $200 there. So what do you do? Shalmana, the one, number one, now tell us, she gets 50. She gets 50 out of the 200. Does that make sense on the face of it? What percentage is that? It doesn't make sense. The Gemara is going to ask that. Okay, we're going to ask that. What do you, why should she get that? You know, she should get from the first 100, from the first 100, she should get a third because they're both in the third. And in the second 100, she should get nothing because she's not entitled to the second 100 at all. Right, they each have a demand. There's $200 here. So for the first 100, Okay, fine. We said, like we said, if there's only 100, they split it equally. Third, 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 right? A drittle, a drittle, a drittle, right? On the second one, she's not entitled to anything, but you say she gets 50. Why is that? Not clear at this point. The Gemara will have to deal with it. So, she takes 50. Number two and number three, they each get 75. That is $200. Number one gets 50, and the other two get 75 each. How does that work? Why is that? We don't know. It's not clear yet in the Gemara. It says shal, they each get three dinner zobs. Dinner, a, zob, a dinner zob is 25 regular zuz. So it really means they each get 75. Okay. So that's when there was, we, we, when there was only $100, that's very simple. They split equally. 
When there's two hundred dollars, complicated. When there's three hundred dollars, it's even more complicated. Let's say there was three hundred dollars. So Shomana tells Chamishim again, the one number one gets fifty. Again, why fifty? <coughs> she only get a third of the first hundred, right? Michelle, <coughs> if there was six hundred again, so she'd get a hundred. Number two would get two hundred. Number three would get three hundred. But there's three hundred dollars here. So what do you do? So number one gets fifty. Shomasayim number two gets a hundred mana. She gets a hundred more than the seventy-five that she got in the second case. The shalshalos mos she shalshalos she gets six golden zavs, meaning one hundred and fifty. Okay, we don't understand the reasons for this yet. This is very difficult to understand. V'chein gimel sheitil because let's say three people invested together, pichso osiru, and let's say let's say three people made an investment. Right, you have many times people go into a partnership to make an investment, and there was a loss or a gain. Kachin chokin, they split it according to. Their investment, right? According to what they invested, that's what that the, that's how they split the losses and the profits, and that's what we're saying over here too. That it's all according; it's proportional. Okay, the cases number two and number three, when there was two hundred three dollars, we don't understand the proportions yet, but we understand that it's proportional. Okay, and that's the same thing when it comes to business transactions. So we're going to deal with this right now. Shemana tells Hamishim in the second case, in the second case where there was how much two hundred dollars to split, right? Remember, number one gets 100, number two gets 200, number three gets 300. But there's not enough to go around. If there's only $100, very simple. They all have the same claim on the first $100. Uh, number one, number two, number three, they all have the same claim. They just, the one who has a claim of 300 should be stronger, right? Because she's entitled to more, maybe. Maybe she should get more the first $100. That's how the Gemara looks at it. That's probably part of what Professor Ahmed had to deal with. You understand? It's a complicated way of looking at it. But he says the first hundred, everybody has the same claim because number three women all have a claim on the first hundred, so they split equally. Okay, number two is problem back. Here. Number two is where there was two hundred dollars. So it was two hours. Like Mara says, Shamana, the one who get number one, who's only entitled to hundred, tells Chamishim plus of the plus of the tilsa who the isla, she should only get thirty three and a third, right? Because even if there's two hundred dollars, her claim is only on the first hundred, and on the first hundred they all have a claim. Number one, number two, number three, so she should get a third. Why should she get anything of the second hundred? She's not entitled to anything in the second hundred. Again, she's not going to get her full amount, but you're talking about where they have proportional claims and, and or equal claims on the first hundred. On the second hundred, number two and number three have an equal claim, but number one has no claim at all. Why does she get 50? Why does the first question is why does she get 50? Amr Shmuel. So Shmuel says a very complicated answer. It doesn't uh, slick the stuff in cycle, and it and it it doesn't fit well. But that's how it goes. That's how, that's his, it, he has a difficult mission. So this is how he explained it. Amr Shmuel, because Sefis Balas Musan, listen carefully. The one number two wrote to number one the Balas Mana. She wrote to number one. Didn't form any mach. I'm not going to fight with you on the first hundred. Only imach I'm not going to fight with you on the hundred. She's not giving it to her. Says Rashi. Number two didn't say to number one. I'm giving you my share of the first hundred. She says, I'm not going to fight with you about it. In other words, in other words, number uh, on the first hundred, she's saying, I'm not going to fight with you, meaning I'm not going to diminish your share because of me. Think about it. On the first hundred, they each have an equal claim, a third, a third, and a third. So, uh, uh, but of course, they'd each like to get the whole hundred, right? They each have a claim for the whole hundred, but they, there's not enough to go around. So they each have an equal claim. So she, number two wrote to number one, on the first hundred, I'm not going to fight with you. Your, your share, which you really would like it to be a hundred, a full hundred, right? You're entitled to a full hundred, but there's not enough to go around, but you're not going to be diminished because of me. You might be diminished because of number three, but you're not going to be diminished. That's how he wrote to her, strange, a strange lawsuit. Why, why, why don't you get 50? Uh, uh, so let's understand. Uh, uh, go, 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 go. So she says, so she says, so she said, let's look, go, 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 go. So she says, so number two says to number one, your share won't be diminished because of me. That's a rational. It won't be diminished. I'm not giving you anything, but when you claim, it won't be diminished because of me. So therefore, when number one is claiming the first hundred and number number three, number three is claiming the first hundred, they get they, they get a, they, they divide it up 50-50, meaning it doesn't really work that way. We're not finished yet. So she gets so she, she's not getting number two. She, she's right. she's getting she's not getting all of number twos. She's just saying her share won't be diminished because of number two. So therefore, what is her claim? Her claim is for the 100. And number three is claiming the 100. Therefore, therefore, uh, number one gets her 50 because it's only, it's only her against number three for the first 100. So she gets 50. Wait, we're not done. 
If that's the case, so okay, that's that's as far as number one goes. Number one gets the 50. But then you say, what does number two and number three get out of the 200? Remember, what are we talking about? We're talking about when there's 200. If there's 100, they just he split it a third, a third, a third. If there's 200, number two says to number one, your share won't be diminished because of me. Your share, you're only claiming in the first time, won't diminish because of me. So therefore she gets 50. Number one gets 50. But if that's the case, number two and number three, you say, they each get 75. What do you mean? Number three should say to number two, you're not claiming anything in the first hundred. Why should you get anything from the first hundred? You understand? Why should you get anything from the first hundred? In the second hundred, fine. Who is no, who's claiming the second hundred? Number two and number three. So that she should, so all number two should get is 50 if she's not claiming anything from the first hundred. Why do you say that number two and number three get 75? You should the Amr's law because number two will retort to number three. I'm not claiming, I'm just, I just told number one that you won't lose anything because of me. But I'm not telling you that number three. In other words, you understand? Number, who's claiming number, uh, who's claiming the first hundred? Okay, number one, we dispatch number one, right? Because she has a claim really of, of the hundred, she should only get a third, but number two says, I'm not gonna, you're not gonna be diminished because of me, because of me, you won't be diminished. So she gets her 50. Now, what about the other 50? She go to number three, right? Because number two is, is withdrawing from it. No, number two is not saying I'm withdrawing from it. I'm not giving my share away. I'm simply telling that I'm not gonna contend with number one, but I am gonna contend with you. In other words, how much money was there in total? 200, right? So the first 50 was dispatched to number one. Now we're dealing with number two and number three, which both have an equal claim on the, the remaining 150. So they each get 75. Difficult to understand. Tosis, look at Tosis oh, it quickly. Works out very look, well. Yeah, yeah, it works out very well. But look, look what Tosis says. Uh, the third Tosis from the end of the page. The Omer Law Midin with Varam who just like, right, Lo is far a shopper time, Tosis says, I don't really understand it too well. It's a very difficult thing to understand. Take a look at Rashi, uh, the second of the wide, not the widest lines near the bottom, but when the lines turn wide, I'm going to look at two Rashis, right? Rashi says there, uh, or at least this Rashi, or uh, even even look at the Rashi three lines after the Gemara in Rashi, where the, in the narrow lines, in the five lines in, uh, before the lines get wide. I'm not going to argue with you, I'm not going to argue with your 100. Your share won't be diminished because of me, Hilkach. He Therefore, she splits it. But Tamla, so the number three should say number two. Fine, you're not involved in number one at all. You should only get fifty from the two hundred. All you should get is fifty, and I should get a full hundred. So the Gemara says. So the second line in the wide lines of Rashi says, "Me didn't from such right." Lonasati chelkib maton. I didn't give her my whole share. My share of the first hundred, which would be a th- thirty-three, I didn't give it to her. Right? Umashi gavs lo bishri. So she didn't take care of me. She told me you took my chalka. She uh, she told me you, you want to tell me not lazu chalka uh, uh, that she took my whole share. I need to like the atzmi maliver. I'm not going to argue with her. Like no no contend there. I'm not going to argue with her over her share. It won't be diminished because of me. The governor yelled because chatsi amar bishri b'chdara. Asham ani ba'alach. But now I'm going to come to split with you. But no sir. She lost the yak atzmi maliver. Chavi shibur bishri b'chdara shab In other words. I'm, you're not going to be diminished because of me. You will be diminished because of number three. So number one gets 50. But number two did not give up her whole share in the first hundred. She says, I'm not going to fight with her, but I am going to fight with you on, on, on the remaining 50 in the first hundred. And of course, in the second hundred, it's only me and you. So we're taking that 150 and dividing it to 75 each. That only explains the case of the $200. In other words, when, again, you have number one, number two, number three, if there's only hundred dollars, they split it equally. If there's two hundred dollars, they split it in this weird manner, lachora, based on these arguments. What about if there is three hundred dollars? What did the mission say? If there's three hundred dollars, the mission said, "How you If there was three shalosh uh, the first one takes fifty again. Takes fifty again. Why should she take fifty? She should only get a third of the first hundred, right? Again, same problem. How you So, so, um, uh, so the first. Uh, so we're assuming now that uh, maybe this, we're still dealing with a case where the second one told the first one, I'm not going to contend with you on the first on the first hundred. So the first number one gets 50. So Messiah Mona, now we're saying the one who's entitled to 200, right? That her ksuba was for 200. She gets a full hundred. Shiva Mechamishu Why should she get 200? She should only get 75, as we said, like in the first case. Why? Because even though there's $300 over here, 
she's only fighting for the first 200. So the first 50, so to speak, she gave to the number one, right? She, number one got that. So again, there's 150 remaining that the second one, that number two is claiming on, so she get half of that because she's fighting with number two and number three about the amount from $151 to $200. That's what she should get. So why does she get a full 100? She should only get 75, like you saw in the second she's case. Fighting on, she's fighting on 107, 100 and... Uh-uh. Yeah. Because she didn't give up. He didn't give up his whole third. Right, that's, what, that's right, that's right. That's right, that's right. To number one, to number right. one, right. right. So number one's got 50. Okay. Which is a third, which, which is okay. half of what yeah, yeah, but but she's got 50. Right. Now, now, what else is number two claiming? What is number two claiming? She's claiming the amount from 100 50. from from 51 to 200. Of which right. 16 of which yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But she correct, so but she, she but she's fighting over that full amount right. of where she's fighting with number two and number three. So she should she has 75, like Rashi says. I in Hadu is love. The Kim the Kim the Kasevas Balas Masayim she wrote to number one. Ela lachlik meyat to Ela b'meyach hamishim. Av a manish lishen. Kum shavu she doesn't have any in the third hundred. She has no claim at all because her exhibit was only for two hundred. So she only gets seventy five. That's what Gemara says. So Masayim mana shim hamishah hu disla. Av mishmol the Kasevas Balas Shalosh Mos the Balas Masayim. This is a different case. This is a different case. Listen carefully. This is not a case. Where this is not a continuation of the second case where number two wrote to number one, I'm not going to contend with you. No, 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 no. Here, what happened was is that number three wrote to number two and to number one. Listen carefully. Amr Shmuel because Sevis, again, Shmuel gives you this weird case. Because Sevis Balas Sholish Mos, Labalas Masayim, Ula Balas Mana. Number three wrote to number two and to number one. Din of Armei Macham, the Mana. I'm not fighting with you at all on the first hundred. I'm not fighting with you at all. She wrote to both of them. In other words, what did number three say? I'm, I'm letting you have number one, uh, the first hundred. I'm not fighting with you at all. So therefore, therefore, what happens to the first hundred? 50-50 to number one and number two. Right, 50 to number one and two. Okay, now, now, well now what, what's, what's left? What's left? Let's look at the second hundred. The first hundred we just distributed to number one and number two, they each got 50, right? The second hundred, who's claiming the second hundred? Number two and number three. So split that 50 50, two people, $100. So how much now does number two have? 100. That's the case. She gets 100. Number one gets 50. Number two gets 100. She got 50 first, and 50 from the first hundred, and 50 from the second hundred. So she has now 100. Number two got 50 from the first hundred. Because number three wrote to number two and number one, I'm not fighting with you in the first hundred. So number one and number two each got 50 from the first hundred. Number two and number three split the second hundred. So number two now has 50 plus 50. She has 100. And what does number three have at this point? 50. And then the third hundred, she gets the whole thing because there's nobody fighting. So she gets 150. That's how it works out. That when there's $300, number ones get 50. Number two gets 200. Uh, uh, number two gets 100. And number three gets 150. But again, it's a weird case. Because it only works out if number three wrote yeah, to number right. two and number one, I'm not fighting with the other one. That's a weird, it's a very why weird. Would make a, why would the mission go to that trouble? Very, very good. Excellent. 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 Yeah, excellent. 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 So that's why we're going to have a machlokas in a minute that, that, that Rebbe doesn't agree with this. Why would the mission be telling us this? You know, what's the point when you, okay, we, we played with the numbers and all that, but what's the chiddish in this? You know, if I write you, if I tell you, listen, I'm not going to fight with you, keep it. What's the big chiddush in that? So we'll see. Rabbi Yaakov Nahar Pokot Mishmei Dervina Amar. He says, no, no, no. He says he didn't like Shmuel's answer. So he says, I'll tell you very simple. Reisha b'shtei pieces b'seishti pieces. You have to understand it. It's all different. In the beginning, in the first case, what was the first case? Not where we, we, when we say the first case, we don't mean the very first case where there was only hundred dollars because then they split it all equally, a third, a third, a third. The first case is where there, how much is there? How much is the estate? Let's say $200, right? So he said like this, the $200, they didn't get at one time. There were two separate seizures or installments. Okay, what happened was the guy died and maybe they had some money owed to them and they came up with $75, okay? So that's he's gonna explain now. Yeah, in the first case, the first case meaning the 200, when the, when the whole amount of split was 200, the second case is where the whole amount split was 300, the safer. Each of those cases are talking about where there were two seizures, two installments were made. Reisha b'shtayt's visas, in the first case, what happened? They got 75. Now when they get 75, 
And what are the claims? Number one, number two, number three, 100, 200, 300. It's only $75. They split it equally, right? Chazimna. And the second seizure, they came up with another hundred, they found another $125. Now, when they got another $125, let's look at it. Of this $125, how much is number one claiming? She's claiming 75 because she got already, everybody got 25. So she says, okay, I'm still owed 75. Where's my money? Okay, but there's two other people claiming the 75. There's no more writing. Uh, I'm going to be with you and I can fight with you. Okay, so of this of the 125, the first 75 is split three ways because they all have the same claim. They all say, I want that 75. So again, number one now has how much? 50, right? 50. Number two has how much? 50 at this point. 50, right? 50. Number three has how much at this point? 50. They all have 50 at this point, right? They all have 50. Now, what remains? There's another 50 remaining of the second 125 when they install the 725. There's 50 remaining. Number two and number three split that. So, what happened? What does it work out? Number one gets 50, number two and number three each gets 75. That's how it works out without any machinations about I, I was mochel you this and you were mochel me that. The complicated case of Shmuel doesn't apply. Very simple. It's talking about where they had money in, three, in, in, in two installments. What about the last case where there's $300 in total? But it wasn't all in one installment. Safe of Bishay Tvisus, Nuflish Mechamesh Bachazim, like we had before, right? They first got, they found $75. So they all split, they each have $25. Now it's a little more complicated. Now the second case, we said there's a total of 300, right? So how much did they get? How much did was the second installment? 225. Out of the 225, how much is the claim of number one? 75. Right, she says, I got 25. They all have $25 so far, right? From the first installment. So number one's claim out of the 225 is 75. And number two and number three also claim that 75 because they're all entitled to the first 100. So again, they take out of that 75, they each get another 25. How much do they all have at this point? 50, they each have 50, right? And that's what we said. The first one gets 50, the second one gets 50. Now, okay, now what's left after the first 75? 75 is gone. How much is left? 150. Because he said the second sum was 225. The first 75, they all have a claim on. What's left is how much? 150. 150. Okay, 150. How much, how much can the number two claim claim out of the 150? How much 50. can she claim out of 150? What do you say, uh, Rami? 50. How much? Huh? Uh, so her claim is 50 because well, whoa, 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 wait, wait, let's, let's see, let's see. Take a look in Rashi. The widest lines at the bottom. The widest, the beginning of the widest lines at the bottom. Like I said before, out of the 225, the first 75, they're all the same. The one who gets to go she claimed if she only got 25. What is her real claim? Number one's claim out of the 225 is only 75. Okay, so she gets a third of that, right? They'll get a third. Number two's claim, remember, number two was supposed to get how much? How much was her ksuba? 200. How much did she get so far from the first installment? 25. So how much is her claim now out of this 225? 175. I only got 25 so far. My claim, my basic claim is I'm owed 175. So upalgi, so 75, as we said, is the bottom of them. Everybody has 50 now, right? Now, now we have another 100, right? Out of the, her, the number two's claim is 175. So she got 25 out of the 75, uh, 75 out of that, out of the 175, she spoke with the other ones. Now she has a claim of another 100, right? Because her claim is 175. She already got 25 in the first installment. Now we find $225. The first one only has a claim of 75. So she gets a third because everybody has a claim on that. Number two has a claim of 175. Okay, so she gets 50. For the first 75, she gets 25. So they have a total of 50 now. And now she still has a claim on, on, on 100. Out of the hundred and seven, out of the 225, she has a claim of 175. 25 she got, in addition to the first installment, so she has 50. Now there's a claim of 100, of 100, right? She has a claim on the other 100. But number three also has a claim on the other 100. And number three has a claim on the whole thing. 
So out of that hundred, she splits it with number three, and she has fifty. So she wound up with twenty-five from the first installment. From the two twenty-five, this the first seventy-five, she gets twenty-five out of that, and then she gets fifty out of the remaining out, out of the other hundred that she's claiming. So she now has a total of a hundred. What remains for number three? That the, the remaining fifty. Remember, out of the two twenty-five. Number one, only at a claim of 75. Number two, at a claim of 175. Number three, at a claim of 225. The last 50 from 175 to 225, nobody had a claim except for number three. So she keeps that on herself. So she winds up with what, 25 plus, plus another 25, first installment plus another 25, plus 50 that she split with number two for, the, for that for the 100 that, uh, that number two had a claim on. So she had 25, 25, 50 is 100, and now the last 50, which is a total yours, she, she winds up with 150. Yeah, okay, that's how it all works out. Without, this is about I'm making a claim, I'm, I'm making a, uh, uh, a I'm, I'm you know, letting you go, I'm, I'm uh, not fighting with you over this or that. This is also the complicated case because it only works out, it only yeah, works yeah, out yeah. If, if they got the two fees out, there are two seizures. Okay, now, now Michael's point. Tanya, Zoom Mishas Reb Nassim, this whole Mishnah, however you learn it, according to Shmuel or according to uh, Rabbi Yaakov, Nahar Pekod, those are the words of Reb Nassim, the Mishnah. Reb Yomer, ain't any row at Varav Shal Reb Nassim, the Elu. I don't agree with this at all. El Achol is Peshava. They split it equally. They split the whole thing equally. I don't care. I don't care if one had a Ksuba of 300, one had a Ksuba of 200. Since they all have a claim over here and nobody's claim is going to be totally met, they're going to split it all equally because even number one who only has a claim of 100 but if you have a and and the and the uh, whole estate is 300 she's only going to wind up with her 100 at the end of the day she's not going to wind up with any extra so even in a case whether it's 100 200 300 they split everything equally that's how Rebbe learns you could see it both ways you could see it both ways since my claim is bigger i should get a bigger share that's, or no, you matter say, when the money comes in. that's right that's no matter when the money comes in and no matter and no matter uh, that the other ones had a bigger claim than her, because they all have a claim of 100. Nobody's going to wind up with more than 100, even though even the, even the one of even the number one is only going to wind up with her 100. Therefore, you split it equally. Now, this leads us into the end of the mission. OK, so that's how Rebbe learns. And presumably, Michael, presumably, I, I saw in the Mavarshim, why did Rebbe say this? Because because um, he says the way the other rabbis are learning, or they're not saying, what's the Kiddush here? You told me it worked out like this, and like this. It's okay. You can you can make up a million cases if they got the installments and ten installments and worked out this way. You can, what what are you teaching me over here? He's teaching me something. Right? According to Rebbe, the mission is teaching us something. No matter that one had a bigger suba than the other, that only makes a difference if there's enough money to go around. If there were six hundred dollars, we wouldn't have to learn this mission, right? The number one would get one hundred. Number two would get two. And number three would get three hundred. But when there's not enough money to go around, they split it equally. That's what Rebbe says. That's already a finish. Yeah, and the, that that the timing is important. Normally, you wouldn't say they okay. found another two hundred. No, no, uh, uh, back and right, right. Uh, yeah, no. So okay, the timing so is the timing. Yeah, so the timing. You could say then. Now, stop. What's my claim? Yeah, yeah. If they thought right now, why do I get? Yeah, yeah. Why do you get now? So why don't they? Why don't you why, why, don't, why don't why don't you go back and reassess it after no, it's all okay. over? And Hanami, we're going to see that on tomorrow's daf. That there is an Indian like that. That it can, once you make your claim, are you finished, or can you reclaim it later on? We're going to see that on tomorrow, on, and we're going to see that in the next mission. We'll, we'll, we'll allude to it in the next mission. But there is there is something to that. There's a machlokus about that. There is something there. But again, we're talking in our mission where all three were married at the exact same split second. Let's assume so. One did not have an earlier claim than the other. The, the issue only was the different amounts of money. Now, the end of the mission said. If three people made, if, 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 if Hank, three people who made an investment together, they bought a they bought a bull, they bought an axe, right, to work, whatever, and uh, uh, there was a loss or there was a gain, they split according to the proportional according to the proportional investment, which is what you would say logically. Says Shmuel, Amr Shmuel, Shnaim Shatil Kisecha, two people made an investment together. One guy invested 100, one guy invested 200. So you would say logically, that you should they, they, they should go according to the investment should go according to their proportion. If it made money, the guy who invested one hundred should get half of what the guy invested two hundred. He should get double his amount. He says Harlem said no. When they plow the field, let's just say they but they invested in an ox and they plow the field and they and they produced a, a bushel of wheat. They split the bushel of wheat equally. Now this doesn't fit in with our logic of investment, right? 
says the Rosh, I want to point this out right away because you see the Ramam Baskin is like this. Says the Rosh that, um, let me just find, he says like this. Since normally, he says, this, this is how you can understand this Gemara, because the whole Gemara goes with this idea. He says, since the normal way of partners when they invest is to make a condition and say, that the investment will be according to the proportion of my investment. If I'm investing 10 times what you're investing, I should also get the profits 10 times of what, of what you're getting. But they normally write that as a condition, and here they didn't. The A little lowest, okay, and they didn't. The guy just listen. We need a cow here. We're a farmer. We are, there's no there's no bull oxes around here. Uh, I have uh, I have enough. You, how much do you have? hundred. Okay, I got two hundred. Let's buy this bull and we'll plow the field together. And they didn't say anything about a point of investment. Muchach shehiskim. They it, it, in fact they didn't make this condition. It it proves that they agreed. Shehito balamon that the guy who only paid half or invested half is still going to take half the profits. Imishum shucharp. Maybe he's smarter. Maybe he's a smarter businessman. Or mikosi bacheres. In other words. But they didn't make that condition. Normally, you would make that condition. In other words, it goes against our logic. Our logic says you should, you know, we would say normally if I invested 200, you invested 100, I should get double the profits, right? But here, since they didn't say that, you split it up. Over up. So now, and, and if they lose, also it's equal 50 50. Amarabba, Mistavra Milsa de Shmuel, when Shmuel said this, which seems strange, Bashor Lachamisha, Lachamisha, that's if, you know, you're talking about plowing. Plowing, you know, if I have two thirds of an animal, I can't plow. You have to have a whole animal. So I need his third also. You know, sometimes you have an investment like that. So you say, listen, the guy, you can understand it because the guy says, listen, I, can, I don't have enough to buy the house. Okay, but you can contribute to it. So you know what? If it wouldn't be for you, I wouldn't be able to do the deal. Therefore, you know, he, you're in a good negotiating position and you want half, you want half. Like, like uh, Bennett, what he did, you know what I mean? Like uh, he was able to bring the other ones in even though he didn't have the majority. You know, you could, you could argue that too. Okay, let's not go into that. Uh, anyway, so Mustafa Milsen and Shmuel, and he bought it for, for, mean for plowing, and he's standing from plowing. Let's say he bought, they bought it for plowing, but at the end, they're going to slaughter the animal. Now we're going to slaughter the animal. We're talking about the animal itself, right? So if I pay two thirds and you get a third, I should get uh, two thirds of the flanken and the uh, and the and the uh, you know all the parts of the animal, and you get a third. Zed not what you must, Zed not each get according to your investment you kind of you put in. That's what Shmuel says. Oh, Rabba said, Rabba says that. Notice when Shmuel says that they divide it equally, that's only when you're going to work. Basically, you're going to take the investment and try to make money with. But if you're just saying you bought the animal together, if I paid paid for two thirds and you paid for a third of the animal, we're going to shecht it now. Even though you originally bought it, Rashi says the kids. Even though you originally bought it for plowing, but now you're gonna, you're going to shift the animal. You should invest. You, you the guy invested two thirds should get two thirds of the meat, and the other guy gets a third. Rabbi Muna says no. Even then, I feel Even if you shlecht it, aschar lemsa. If they didn't make that condition, and you see Ram Sechan there too. Meisvei. Now we have some cash on it. Shnei shan shikil kisach the kis. Two guys invested. Zem mana b'zem asayim. One guy invested half, a hundred. The other guy invested two hundred. Aschar lemsa. That's what it says. That it's a tosefta. It's a brisa. That as chalent they split it equally. My lab b'shol lechrish from tavicha. Isn't it even in a case where they're going to shecht it, and this goes against Raba, the tiyuf to the Raba, because Raba says if you're going to shecht it, and you're talking about how much meat I'm going to get, you know, the guy invested twice, should, twice as much, should get twice as much meat. So Raba said, "Lo b'shol lechrish from lechavisha." That's only if you're going to plow with it. In other words, you're talking about they, they, they agreed. That on the future investment and uh, future profits that they're going to make from investing, from plowing, etc., they're going to split that. But if you're going to shift the that's what that's what Rabba said. Each would get his own share. So if that's the case, out of Tani Safe, it says over there, let's say two guys, two guys were going to make a farm together. And one guy bought a real invested, he got a, the best ox you can find, a big, strong, heavy ox. The other guy got a weak, dying ox. Right, and he spent a lot less money. He spent half the money, got a got a dying ox, and now the two oxen got got uh, uh, mixed up, and they couldn't tell. Then they're, they're the yeshiva guys; they couldn't tell which one was who. You know, so they were they, the two oxen got mixed up. So what are you doing now? You're selling the oxen. You know, what are you going to do? They got mixed up. Listen, one guy spent two hundred on the ox, one guy spent a hundred, and they got mixed up. So there you split it according to the investment, right? When they sell them both, so each of this guy will take two thirds. So why talk about that case? If you say that if he, even if he bought it for Kalisha, but he's gonna slaughter the animal at the end, you divide it according to the money, lift against the dead, make enough mina by the shore itself. Why talk about if you invested in, they bought two oxen and they mixed them up, 
talked about with one ox where they bought it for plowing and then they use it and then instead they slaughtered it. Medvar, more Mishola, Chavisha, and Chavisha. When do you say what? That you split it evenly when you bought it for Chavisha and you stand and it's used for Chavisha, even though one guy invested twice with the other guy, you split the profits equally. But if you're going to slaughter it, then not with According to you, Rabbi, that's what it should have said. Why talk about a different case of mixing up the shore? Just talking about if you're going to use it for slaughtering, then you should go according to the investment. So that's what it means. That's what Rabbi said. Medvar, more When do you split it equally? If you bought it for plowing and using it for plowing. But if you bought it for Kharisha and you're going to now uh, shecht with it, you're going to shecht it, you're going to shecht it. Then nasikami. Then it's as if that's as if they bought two different oxen, an expensive one and a cheap one, and they got mixed up. Is that not Each one goes according to his investment. That's how Rabba will learn. So Rabba and Rabba Nuna have a machlokis in Pshat and Shmuel, and it seems to be the Pshat is that the Pshat is like Rabba Nuna that they split it, even though this goes against our logic, because like the Rush explained, because you should have you should have mentioned it. We're gonna. If I invest twice as much, I'm going to get twice the profits uh, that, that, that you're going to get. But they didn't mention that. They apparently meant to say, listen, even though I'm putting more money, sometimes you have invest money. You know, one guy will put more money, one guy will put less money in. The other guy maybe has expertise. After all, why do people go into partnerships in general? I always argue against partnerships. Why do people go into partnerships? Because uh, usually there's not enough money, right? So he needs the other guy. Or, he couldn't have, or one guy has... This happens very often. One guy has a certain expertise. One guy is an artist and one guy has the money. He's the business guy. So even though the artist is putting in less money, but he's using his expertise. So for that, he gets half the, half the profit. That's how you can understand this. Tanan. But we're still not done. Didn't Amr say otherwise? You just said, what, 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 what did Shmuel say over here? Amr Shmuel, two guys invested. One guy invested double. Uh, we still split the profits equally. What are our Mishnah? Tanan, our Mishnah says, Bechain Shloshin, she kill a kiss. We talk about the case with the women, number one, number two, number three, each had a different amount coming to them. We well, said also if three, if three guys invested uh, in, into one, you know, into one investment, if, it, if there was a loss or a gain, they split it equally, they split it according, proportionally according to their investment. So he goes against our Mishnah. Don't we also if there was a loss of the investment? No, they invested in something, stocks or an animal or plowing or whatever they did, or there was a gain. And, and you say, you, you go proportionally. He says, no, no, no. When it's business and they were talking about future profits, he split it equally. The mission is talking about a different case. Look, we're talking about the money themselves that they invested. When they invested in those days, they invested coins. So when they invested, they gave, let's say the guy put in, one guy put in 10 old coins and they used that money. Then the, those coins got replaced by the new coins, by new coins. You know, one guy put in 10 coins, one guy put in 20 coins. So they put in a total of 30 coins. And those coins got recalled. You know, they, they, uh, they took them out of circulation. They put in new coins. So he says, you know what? When you say they increased, increased because the new coins are worth more than the old coins. The old coins were rubbed out and, and, and damaged, et cetera. So one guy put in 20 coins, old coins. He should get 20 of the new coins. And the guy who put in 10 old coins will get 10 of the new coins. We don't mean where there was a profit from the investment. Profit from investment split equally, equally. That's how you can understand the Mishnah. If, the, if people invested differently and there was a gain in the, in the, in the coins because they exchanged them, the government exchanged them for new coins. So you split it across. I put in 20 coins and you put in 10 coins. What are, uh, uh, I'm going to take out 20 of new coins. You're going to take 10 of the new coins. You're not going to split that equally. Or what about how do they, how do they, uh, where they lost Pixu? Is Sir Tunisa when the coins became worthless and they took them out of circulation. And what were the coins used for? They used the old coins as a healing on, the, on a foot. You know, if you had a bunion or something on your foot, they used old coins. The old coins somehow, the metal in it, the, the rust or whatever, was somehow was a good healing thing on the, on the foot. That's what they, they, they didn't have modern uh, medicine, ointments and all kinds of stuff like that. And, and, uh, and uh, you know, they had doctors and uh, podiatrists and all that. They would, tie a, they would tie a old coin. Uh, they would tie an old coin <laughs> on. <laughs> <laughs> antibiotics either. Right, right, right. So that's what they used. That's what they used. This was their antibiotic. So that's what we mean over here. We don't mean with an alchemist. We mean the coins themselves that they invested. If they became, if they got better coins in place of them, or the coins became worse, and they were so that means that then they, then they would go according to the number of coins they put in proportion. Says the Mishnah. Now we're talking about a man was married to four women, and they were married at different times: January, February, March, April. Let's say right. And he died. 
right? Now they're coming to collect from the ocean. They're coming to collect their ksuba. We have the first one gets her money, the one from January. She has a first claim, goes for the second one, you go in order, right? When the first one collects, listen carefully, she's entitled to collect first, but she has to swear to the second one that she already hasn't been paid. Remember, the second one says, Oh, you're going to get your ksuba. Okay, we understand you're first. You got married in January. I got married in February. But maybe you're going to, maybe he already left you some money. You know, I, maybe, maybe if you get your money, I, there will be nothing left for me. So the first one has to swear to the second one that she hasn't been paid a nickel yet. In the same way, the Shneel, Shlish, the second one swears the third one, Shlish, the Ravias. But Ravias and Fresh Lobish the fourth one is paid according to the Tanakama without a Shvua because the other three have been paid already. So what's the problem? Okay. Rashi explains here, we'll see this in the Gemara tomorrow, Mitzvah Rashi explains that it's speaking about Gonchi, Somim, Gedolim. When Ravias, Shlish, Zafal, Ravias, and Fresh Lobish what about these some that they're collecting from? They're already the gedolim. When the Gemara talks about some usually means katanim. When the gedolim, when the chacham said a bully free minach, if you're coming collecting these some, you have to make a shul. Why shouldn't the fourth one have to make a shul to these some that she hasn't been paid? That's only by some katanim below the gedolim. That's what this kind of holds. So the fourth one doesn't have to make a shul at all. Then Nanas disagrees. He says, Omer Bechim Neshi Achron and Iskarik, what she's going to gain just because she's number four, she doesn't make a shul. Afilo Tifra El Bishwa. We're going to talk about she has to make a shvur to the other ones. What's the machlok is based on? Because the issue is, if let's say number one, number two, and number three lose their share, because let's say they took a piece of land, right? Let's say the, number one got her piece of land, number two got three. Then one of them, let's say number two, lost her piece of land because somebody had a prior claim. He owed money. The husband owed money. So then it could come out that number two would want the money, right? Would want would would. would would go now and she'll the strain on number four, right? So therefore, it becomes very complicated. So number four, so, so number four should also make a shvua mm. because it's possible she'll lose, she'll uh, that number two or number one will lose their share, and th- then it gets to the issue if number one or two lose their share, subsequently can they go back to number four because after all they came first? This is the question you raised before, Irving. Mean, if if once you got your share and then you lose it for something or the circumstances change or there's another installment. Can you make another claim? Or once it's done, it's done. That's going to be in tomorrow's tomorrow. So Afi Lotzebel Bishwur. How you yot says kulan biyom echad. Now, what did we just say? That the number one got married in January, number two in February, three in March, and fourth in April. Let's say they all got married on the same day. So whoever got married first, it doesn't go. Let's say they all got married on the same day. They all got married and saying the guy had a real party over here. He married four women on the same day. I right? figured if he has the cater already, you know, it's one meal, right? So you see, he says, even though a Marvin Simcha was Simcha, whatever, but uh, he got married all in one day. So if one was even an hour earlier than the other one, they used to do that. Shows they used to write the hour, the time that they wrote the Ksuba, they would put a, like a time stamp on it. Let's say they were all at the exact same split second. And there's only 100 hours. Chalk is the As we said, they split it equally. If they have the, they all have the same amount of ksuba. We're not talking about different amounts of ksuba. That was on a medal of the case with different amounts of ksuba. But if they all had, and according to Rebbe, they'd still split it equally, right? And, and whatever, there was enough money to go around. But let's say there was only 100 hours and they all have the exact same time. And I say, hey, maybe he had one ksuba for all four of them, right? Or they were time stamped the exact same at the same time. They got married at the same split second. Then you split it all equally. And that's the end of the case. What's the machlok between Benanis and the Tanakama? But the fourth one has to make a shvua that we'll see on tomorrow's daf. My Mifflik Shmuel goes into that. I think tomorrow's daf is on the podcast. And on Sunday, Mirz Hashem, we'll start with the Mishnah daf Tzadikay, Sunday's daf, Arab Sukkot. We'll start with that daf on, um, on, uh, from the Mishnah, from the uh, Mishnah on, on Sunday morning. And again, uh, to remember that during Chalamoy, during Chalamoy, we will start 15 minutes later than we normally start. Which in your slime is well, we start at 520, it'll be 535. And in New York, it'll be 1035 p.m. instead of 1020 p.m. because we have to dab we dab and dabbing starts later than Kolomoy because of uh, uh, the Esther, the little of an asterisk after net. So uh, so again, Sunday will still be at the regular time, and then during all of Kolomoy will start at 535, 15 minutes later than normal. Shabbat shalom with Kulama Gmarto. Thank you. Marto. Uh-huh.